So these autonomous cars, 10 years in the future, and I'm picking 10 years because that's virtually a certainty. It could come a lot sooner than that. These autonomous cars will be all there will be. And so if we put ourselves at that point in the future uh, where they have been completely adopted as the means of road transportation, what will that look like? Well, there's a lot of factors involved that will influence what it will look like. A lot of those factors involve the infrastructure that keeps our roads functioning now. And a lot more of it will be influenced by the relationship that people have to their vehicles. So if you look at those two factors, the public infrastructure of what keeps roads functioning and people's relationship to their vehicles now, and then look into the future of autonomous cars. By examining those factors, you can get a pretty good idea of what road transportation is going to look like after autonomous cars pass over the cusp of human-driven cars dominating to autonomous, looking, uh, autonomous cars dominating. So the first thing will be the infrastructure. The reason that's the first thing is because people will by themselves take much longer to adjust to a different relationship to cars than those people involved in highway authority. The reason it will take longer for people to adjust is that they're already comfortable where they are with their own ownership of cars. But highway infrastructure and the people that control that are governed by economics. And other issues like safety, efficiency, but the major factor is economics. These highways, this one we're driving on right now, this one was built the length of Vancouver Island, something like 15 or 20 years ago, at a cost of billions of dollars. And it took, I don't know, it probably took three or four years from the time they first started constructing it until it was finished. And obviously at that time, The only people who thought there might ever be autonomous cars mostly were people that watched the Jetsons and fantasy shows like that. So the people who built the road, issued the contracts, paid the taxpayer dollars, believed that the only reason to build a road was to satisfy the needs of human drivers not to satisfy the capabilities of autonomous cars. So what are the facts about human drivers? Well, they drive in cars that carry about four to six passengers. And the average all-time 
across countries, occupancy of cars is about 1.4 per vehicle, 1.4 people including the driver. And they're driven, in North America anyway, about 1.2 hours a day or about 5% of the time. The rest of their time, 95% of their time, cars sit in driveways or parking lots. So you've got a big population of cars that aren't driven very much and that require a lot of highway capacity since it takes a big two-ton vehicle to carry 1.4 people to their destination. Nobody's ever going to do it, but if some government authority said, no, you can't drive your car, you can't go to your destination unless you carry the capacity of your car full of people. So maybe that's an average of five, four and a half or five capacity. Well, if they did that, then they'd really only need a third the capacity on the highways to carry those cars. Those two-ton vehicles would be carrying three times as many people on average. But nobody's ever going to do that. Not with privately owned cars. So they build multi-billion dollar highways to accommodate this situation where people want to own their own cars and they want to drive them virtually by themselves. Autonomous cars won't be like that. First of all, autonomous cars they won't be carrying an average of 1.4 people per car like privately owned cars do. In fact, they won't be privately owned at all. Not in the way that the present day cars are owned. And why is that? Are people going to accept that? Aren't they going to say, well, I want my own autonomous car? Well, they sure, they people will say that. But they won't be able to afford one. Because autonomous cars won't be like the cars that are privately owned today. We're driving these cars on roads on a very lax regulatory system. Anybody can drive a car, pretty much anybody. You go down to the motor vehicles branch, you apply, you may get tested once or twice, you, you, might, you might fail your test once or twice, but eventually they'll give you a license. So it's the lowest common denominator of human driver that's driving cars and the roads are built accordingly. If they were all Formula One racer type drivers, if that was the only kind of driver there was, we'd have a different set of rules. People would be driving their cars faster with the same amount of safety. When the roads are dominated by autonomous cars, each one will have driver capability much more competent than any driver that can drive, any human driver that can drive a car today. If this was a fully autonomous car ten years in the future, there would be no need to be more than a, sh a short distance behind that car ahead of us. And that's because when that car breaks, the autonomous car behind it would break. And there wouldn't be a, a collision. Now, that does happen with human drivers, but our reaction time is much slower than autonomous cars would be. So it's a safety issue, and the safety issue with autonomous cars would be that uh, it would be established, I believe, 
that vehicles would be built to a standard that could withstand the reaction time of computers rather than humans, which means that if that car slammed on its brakes for some good reason, this car would have to match its braking capability exactly. And therefore, if that car can stop in 60 feet, then this car will have to stop in 60 feet. And that will simply be based on the reaction time being almost zero of the autonomous car behind it. But it's more expensive to build cars in a fleet that aren't run according to the lowest common denominator. They have to be run according to the rigors of a mass transit system, similar to the way subway systems are built now. They don't depend on some guy changing the oil when he feels like it or uh, working on the brakes when he's got the money. They'll have to be very expertly maintained vehicles, and that costs money. They'll also have to have capabilities that are superior to anything on the road now. We drive at 100 miles an hour, or 60 miles an hour, or 100 kilometers an hour. There's no real reason why highways couldn't be built for traffic going at 200 miles an hour. 200 miles an hour, that's say 300 kilometers an hour. 350. But human drivers couldn't be uh, relied upon to drive those speeds safely. And the cars that people drive in couldn't be relied upon to, to go those speeds either. But if you have autonomous cars, there's really no reason not to make a fleet of cars they can meet those requirements. And of course, that would uh, reduce the need for highways, the, the extent of highways that we have now, because traffic would go over them so quickly that a similar amount of traffic today might take four hours to cover the distance. Those cars might take 45 minutes to cover the distance. Therefore, you really only need a quarter the number of roads, or the capacity of roads. And those vehicles would efficiently use their network communication system to carry more than one passenger, more than 1.4 passengers. They would be carrying close to their capacity of passengers for the maximum use of the road. There again, you're probably reducing the number of vehicles on the road by down to another quarter or third. So the infrastructure to build highways for humans versus the infrastructure to build highways for autonomous cars would probably be reduced for the autonomous cars by a factor of 10 to 1. And if you're spending billions of dollars on human roads, even though the autonomous roads may require better, superior engineering, it would still be outweighed by the fact that you wouldn't need nearly so many of them. 